We're going to take a look at um, all the different things you can do with small molecules with one center atom. So we're looking at small molecules here. Um, this would be, for example, our center atom carbon. All right. So first you need to be able to draw a Lewis structure, which has been done for you. And then remember that every one of these bonds that we see in the Lewis structure is a covalent bond. So it's shared electrons, right? Two electrons shared. And I would refer to this whole um, compound as a molecule. So molecules contain covalent bonds. So the first skill you want to be able to have is given this Lewis structure, we want to work towards getting it into the right shape with dipoles and stuff like that. So first we need to know what is the electron geometry or the arrangement of electrons around that center atom. And so to answer that question, we need to know how many electron groups there are that want space. Remember, these are all negatively charged, so they want space from each other. So bonds, single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds would count as a single group. And if there was a lone pair of electrons on carbon, that counts as an electron group as well. Um, so here I can see that there are four electron groups. So at this point, it might be helpful to refer to a table that looks something like this. Um, and recognize on here that there are, for this class, three different types of electron group setups that we can have. If we have two electron groups, then we're looking at a linear arrangement for electron geometries. If we have three, we're looking at trigonal planar, so it would be three electron groups. And then if we have four electron groups, we're looking at tetrahedral. And what those tetrahedral molecule geometries look like depends on how many lone pairs. All right, so you have three options for this electron geometry, linear, trigonal planar, or tetrahedral, depending on how many groups you have that need space. All right, so um, we have four, so that's going to be tetrahedral if we come back here. So we have four electron groups, therefore tetrahedral. And if I was to look at this as a model, it might look something like this. So you can see this is our tetrahedral um, electron geometry. Now, molecular geometry is going to be the visible shape. So once we put atoms onto these electrons, what does it look like? Um, and then once we figure that out, we will redraw. So if I take another molecule and I say, okay, well, I've got a hydrogen and if I'm looking over here, two chlorines. Um, so maybe those look like they're on opposite sides in the Lewis structure and then one hydrogen. Then I notice that my entire tetrahedral electron geometry shows up in my molecular geometry, right? There's an atom at every location. And so therefore, my molecular geometry is going to be the same as my electron geometry, and it will also be tetrahedral, okay? Um, now, redraw in molecular geometry. So if I can come back up here to my electron groups. When I have four electron groups, I want to think about them being arranged in a tetrahedron. And to draw a tetrahedron, you need to use a wedge and dash and then two straight lines. This would be my center atom. And I can use this kind of format to draw tetrahedral molecular geometries and also to draw... Um, trigonal pyramidal. So here I want to redraw this molecule and so just start with this kind of setup here and I know that carbon will be in the middle. Use vertical dashes. Now a trick here you notice that the chlorines are on opposite sides but when I built the molecule notice that the greens the chlorines are together no matter how well here I can kind of see it looks like the picture above but as I rotate it, I can see, hey, well, it would be the wedge and the dash, or they would be near each other. And so if, when you redraw it, you can put those chlorines together. That will help you out a lot as you figure out the rest of the um, questions here. So I'm going to put the chlorines together here and put the hydrogens together here. Um, read the question carefully. Sometimes it'll say to include those electron dots or not, okay? Um, and just for reference, I chose to put the chlorines here together, but you might put them together here, or you might put them together here. And so there's different ways you can draw this, but it's always recommended just for ease later to keep those chlorines um, near each other, okay? Um, so that is my molecular geometry. Next up, we want to think about how are the electrons shared in bonds. So I have four bonds here that I want to look at. 
and think about how our electrons share. So to do that, first I want to pull out an electronegativity table, okay? Um, and so electronegativity table, I've got some key elements highlighted here. Here's hydrogen, it has an electronegativity of 2.5. Um, hydrogen is, did I say hydrogen? Carbon. Um, hydrogen is 2.1 which would put it right here if we were to put it kind of in the spectrum. Um, and then chlorine is 3.0. And remember, electronegativity is the attraction of electrons in a bond that that element has. And as I get closer to fluorine, fluorine has the strongest attraction for electrons in a bond. So I've put those electronegativities um, on here. And now I want to think about... Um, what those differences mean, okay? And truly, this is actually more of a spectrum, but we're dividing with some categories here um, to keep the model simple for this class, okay? So if my difference is 0 to 0 0.4, we say that's a nonpolar bond, and that means electrons are shared evenly between those atoms. So I need to evaluate each of these bonds and compare it to these differences. If it's between 0.5 and 1.9, we say electrons are getting pulled towards that higher electronegativity, um, and if it's above 2.0 for a difference, we say it's an ionic bond, that the one element has taken the electrons. So evaluate each bond, and if there is a bond dipole, we're going to put a blue arrow, like you can see here, um, there. Okay, so um, if there is a difference in the middle here, we will draw that bond dipole. So let's look at CH. 2.5 minus 2.1 gives me 0 0.4, which is therefore a nonpolar bond. That means... I'm going to treat those as if the electrons are shared evenly. Same with this CH, 2.5, 2.1, so electrons are shared evenly. We are always going to treat CH bonds as nonpolar, so you will never put a bond dipole on the CH bond. Now, how about C to Cl, 3.0 to 2.5? It's just a little more than this one, but for our categories that keep things simple, it's a 0.5. So that means that I do need to draw a bond dipole, and I want to draw the electrons being pulled towards chlorine, leaving it a little bit positive here by carbon. Notice how that parallels the bond exactly. Go to the next bond, C to Cl. Again, 2.5 and 3 gives me that 0.5 difference. Electrons are going to be pulled towards chlorine, and my bond dipole parallels that chlorine exactly. Okay, So here I have no bond dipole, so even sharing on CH bonds and uneven sharing of electrons on CCl bonds, okay? Um, next up, how are electrons shared in the whole molecule? So if I'm looking at the whole entire molecule, are electrons inclined to hang out on one side of the molecule? And if I kind of look at what I've got here, where the two chlorines were together, I can see that electrons are getting tugged over towards this chlorine side of the molecule and away from this hydrogen side of the molecule. So we're kind of thinking about sides of the molecule at this point. And so I would say electrons are getting tugged towards this green chlorine side. And the way that I show that visually then is I'm going to um, add a molecular dipole that goes right between those two blue arrows, okay? And if I have that molecular dipole, I'm saying here's where I'm gonna have more electron time. So electrons are gonna hang out on this side of the molecule more. Um, and that means that I have uneven sharing across the molecule. And anytime you have that molecular dipole, it's a polar molecule, okay? If I do not have it, it's a nonpolar molecule. Um, now, whatever, way that you drew those molecules. Remember I said maybe your chlorines are together in different places. Here's my chlorines with bond dipoles. This would be my molecular dipole, okay? Here's chlorines up here. I still have a molecular dipole. And so no matter how you draw your molecule, if you do your blue bond dipoles right, you will always find a molecular dipole and come up with the same answer that this is a polar molecule, polar molecule, polar molecule. Okay, um, so finally, how do we use this? So one of the ways that we use this is to talk about intermolecular forces. Um, and this is huge because this helps us understand solubility um, and all kinds of different things about how molecules interact. These are weaker than covalent bonds, so we draw them just kind of as an attraction, um, not quite a solid line. Um, but if we think about one of these molecules, okay, and another one, and they're just kind of floating around in a solution, they are going to have opposites attract 
And so they're going to line up like this, where I have the molecular dipole negative end attracted to the positive end of the next molecular dipole over. And so what I end up with is they align like this, and I get hydrogen, or no, sorry, not hydrogen bonds, but I get an intermolecular attraction or kind of a stickiness between the two. So this would be, again, negative electrons are here more often, positive electrons are not here as often, causes those to stick together. And this attraction that we're seeing here is called a dipole, dipole attraction. And when I hear dipole, dipole attraction, I'm thinking big pink arrow attracted to another big pink arrow. So you have to have a polar molecule attracted to another polar molecule to have this type of attraction. So that takes us through all the way from a Lewis structure, finding the electron geometry. And remember, we had three options for electron geometry finding the molecular geometry of what that molecule actually looked like when I put atoms onto it, drawing that, figuring out the bond dipoles, figuring out are the electrons uneven throughout the molecule, it's polar, and then I can see how those attractions play out when I have two molecules. So hopefully that helps you see the big picture and work through these long problems.